Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Our next presenter is with Turbot, and his name is Nathan Wallace. Please give him a warm welcome. All right. Thanks for everyone for coming. We're going to do a 15-minute session here on how to think about automated compliance in your cloud. So I work at Turbot, and we do this every day with large enterprises, pharmaceutical companies, financial organizations, trying to help them get to a place so they can really automate their cloud so their teams have massive amounts of agility while they have the controls they need sitting underneath them. So before we get into 100 different things, it's actually really important to think about how you're going to tackle your automation. What is the architecture you're putting underneath that? What's almost your philosophy of cloud? So at Turbot, we believe it's really important to think about a few things as you go through that journey. The first of which is that you've absolutely got to choose to ride this rocket that is AWS and the other things in this environment. Right? You can't compete with these. You can't build services next to them, in front of them. You can't abstract them. If you do, you will be too slow, and you will lose the battle. You've got to work out how to turn their speed to your advantage. Now, as you're doing that, you really want to have your apps giving them that agility of that speed, that access to the Amazon console, that ability to use those different services. And we really to make that safe, we have to isolate these workloads. We used to do this with, we went had physical servers, we had people sharing, and then we went, oh, VMs are a good idea, let's separate them into virtual machines, and gradually we got to containers and other things. At Turbot, we believe that the physical data center was like the physical server, and now we're going to this idea of all these virtual data centers separating out all these workloads into their own isolated environments. When you pull that off, particularly if you're in a heavily regulated environment, the amazing thing is that you actually unlock change management. The application has all the power now. It manages its own infrastructure. And as we move that up to the app, that management infrastructure, we actually can move all the infrastructure change to the application change control process, which lets us move really fast in some areas or as slow as we'd like in other areas. Now, as you make that shift to AWS, you've really got to think about how you're going to design that. And we believe there's a maturity model we see most organizations going through as they make that journey. The first one is they start with a few people in an account just testing some things out and trying. Then someone else gets word of it, so they decide to move in there with them and start sharing that account, and they're going a bunch of stuff. Of course, unfortunately, after a while, you end up with a whole bunch of crap hanging around and post-it notes pointing at each other. And so you, then you start to think, of, man, how am I going to manage this? Of course, enterprises then move to the idea of, well, let's organize it. We'll do them as hosted services. I'll manage the party. Everyone can come when I say. But of course, now we're completely bottlenecked. We're sitting there moving at the, you know, that central team's capability. And it doesn't remove the fact that you've still got your crazy uncle at the table. So at Turbot, we believe you've really got to lean into the idea of that multi-tenancy that Amazon already gives you. They're giving us hundreds of accounts that are already protected from each other as organizations. We can turn that model to our advantage and actually separate all of our workloads into those separate Amazon accounts, creating a hard blast radius around each person, each group, each team. And then we can have services that really accelerate or help coordinate how we work within those isolated spaces. Now, once you've got that model of all these different accounts hanging around people doing things, it's really important to think about how you do policies on that, force encryption, you know, manage that environment. So it's a, you, as an organization, you have to come up with those must and should rules, things you're going to enforce and things you're going to recommend. And don't forget, there's going to be a crap load of exceptions. These are large enterprises. Everybody's always got something different they have to do somewhere. We think of that, those as must rules or should rules, which have a scope in a hierarchy of being applied, making it easy to add new accounts and have them immediately done in the context of that rule set. So now we have all these accounts with teams with the agility of their own use protected and isolated, and we've combined that with policies like enforcement of encryption, setting up of identity and access. What we really want to do now is have real-time detection and correction of how those people are working. So if they create an S3 bucket, we want to instantaneously detect that and enforce the policies we care about in the environment. And once we get that balance right, we've now got the ability for these teams to have high agility and the ability to work, coupled with these controls, wrapping them and making them as safe as possible in the environment. Guardrails always are a basic flow. You can go to a lot of sessions where people talk about this. But the key thing is you're grabbing events and then making a decision in context with policies about what you want to do and how you want to implement that. 
At Turbot, we think it's really, really important to think about that policy context and joining those pieces together. And we spend a lot of time building a workflow engine and the capability to do this at very, very large scale. Now we have the ability for these teams to be working independently. We can rethink our operational model. We're no longer doing things for them. We're now in a world where we're teaching them how to do it and letting them work within that safe, isolated environment with the guardrails wrapping them. So instead of having a request fulfillment model, we're now moving to a world where app teams are directly working with AWS. They can interface and learn from that cloud team. And then we can combine that with these real-time software operational controls. Now we've got a, app teams that are actually able to use AWS and move at their own speed. And we've combined that with a team that's able to teach them, work with them, and build safety controls around them. We can start to work together. We're no longer requesting and arguing and telling who's doing what, et cetera. We're now in a place where I need to use queuing. I need to use a new service from Amazon. Let's learn about that together, sit side by side, and work out how to make it work in the organization. It changes the nature of the relationship that you're working on. And that allows you to move a lot faster with that type of automation. The other key to building out all your automation patterns is to have a really set of common languages and best practice patterns that you can deploy at scale. Identity and access language that you can use repeatedly, like an admin person versus a metadata user. Networking patterns, like you want to know when you say it's a DMZ what you mean. That means it has access to the internal network, as opposed to a public one, which might have no access internally. You have to come up with patterns that you can use, because then you can talk about them, move faster, but you can also automate them out together with more clarity. This is a model we happen to use for IAM. In Turbo, we, we automate out the idea of uh, it's levels, S3 metadata, S3 read only, S3 operator, S3 admin, EC2 metadata, read only, operator, admin, making that simple to deploy and understand. Once you've got these real-time guardrails running now around a world where users are making their own change, visibility becomes drastically more important than it was in the past. People need to know what you automated underneath them. Similarly, you need to know who took what actions in the environment so you have a record of that. Now, we all get the idea of audit logging and shoving stuff in S3 buckets, but what we're talking about at Turbot is the idea that you can actually see a visual history of your infrastructure in the CMDB and see that a user created a bucket, and then 10 seconds later, something like Turbot came along and automated the guardrails you need into that environment. With all of these pieces coming together, we reach a place of automation where we're starting to think differently. People are now unable to use those services, and we don't require the central team to help them with everything. They're able to move with more speed and agility. And as a central team, we're building more and more automations to make that faster and easier as a cloud team. So we can reach a point where, as we hit issues, we're now thinking about not fixing tickets, but instead killing tickets. We never want to see this issue again. What's the automation we can build to avoid this problem or detect it earlier and take an appropriate action? At Turbot, we believe that all of level one and two can be automated out. Anything that can be scripted for a human to do can be scripted for the computer to do. And that starts to change the way we think about that. And it really feeds a DevOps model where the application team is then responsible. So when we tie all those pieces together, we enter a world of software-defined operations. So for Turbo, we did think about it as this. We'd start to run inside an account and give access, users access to just the Amazon accounts they're using. You can see on the left-hand side here a list of accounts I happen to have access to use. The user can click into that and immediately see context in their environment. Their controls are green. Their policies are in good shape. Now, we believe it's really important that users are not abstracted from that Amazon environment. They should be able to use the Amazon console. They should be able to use the different controls in that environment. Make this a bit easier. So they, we encourage users to get straight in there and do their job. You don't want to distract them with other ways of doing it or force them through templating systems. So in a Turbo, they can go into an S3 service and literally just create a bucket. We've all seen this before, so we'll try and do it as quickly as possible. Now, what's happening now in the background that we've created that bucket? Turbot's wired up automatically all the event watching in this account, all the cloud trail, all those different pieces. It's now going to detect that event in real time and start taking actions to make sure it meets the policies of our environment. So if we go down and have a look at that bucket, we can see it's here. If we come into the properties of that bucket, we can see service ac server access logging's already been enabled by Turbot. 
if we refresh, you'll see some other things start to come through. The default encryption has been set in the background. The tags have been set in the environment. These are all coming through from the policies that are set in that Turbot environment, allowing you to work quickly and easily. We also implement things like protection so that people can't actually break or change those things in that environment, making sure you're keeping them safe. Stuff like the bucket policies get set, enforcing encryption in transit. Right? This can all be automated, getting to a whole, you to a whole new place. Now, if we go back to Turbo, we can actually see that in the background, Turbot's realized the bucket was created and started keeping that visible history of what's going on. So we can actually have a look at the activity of that bucket and understand what's been changing or happening in that environment behind us. Just takes a second to load here. I apologize, I went to the wrong place. So for the bucket, we can see that it was originally created by Nathan. And then Turbot came along just a few seconds later and actually added the encryption, adding the logging. We can see that whole history, added the tagging, et cetera. If we go to the controls framework, we can see in Turbot the status of each of the things we're talking about, whether it's encryption, you know, the ability for it to be updated in the CMDB, other tags, correct. If we go into one of these, we can actually see the history of what happened. So we can see that the alarm was raised. We can see Turbot then corrected it in response to that alarm and then automatically closed the alarm. We've just gone to a 10-second ticket close time. right? This is a whole new world compared to our manual review process as we used to. Now, developers need to know what's going on in that environment. So Turbot keeps a record of everything that's happened, including, for example, the CloudWatch event that triggered it all in the first place. This was a create bucket action from Amazon. They can see that. We can then see the context for how this decision was made. What was the value of the options in that area, so how it made that decision all logged out in detail. Of course, because it's, you know, security and compliance care about these things, we have to package all that up and push it out to S3 for posterity to make sure we know exactly what happened. Now, we, those controls are working depending on the policies you've set in the environment. These are just policies we have around S3 in Turbo. We have over 900 of these across different services. So if we go to something simple like versioning, we can see here how the policies are set in this environment. We can see that Turbot has enforced versioning for all accounts, but once we come down to this account, we've said, let's just skip it in this case. But I can create an exception for this one bucket and say, you know what, I really want versioning enforced on this bucket. As soon as I create that, Turbot will now ensure that policy is true on the bucket and true for all time. So if anyone even changed it back, it would immediately turn it back on. So those policies give us that then that history of what's been happening and the managing the exceptions. We can also see if we go up in Turbo, here's every exception I practiced a few times here before to this policy in the environment. So you can see every bucket inside any account in this Turbo scenario has versioning turned on, you know, except for these scenario, except for these exceptions. Now, it's important that we have that idea of how to react and guardrail things out. But as I mentioned at the start, we also need the idea of how to manage our environment. So in Turbot, we do things like try to make things like IAM a lot easier with those common language and common models, as I said before. These really accelerate your conversations. So in Turbot, for example, we have the idea that you can search Active Directory for a user and then give them permissions based on the system. Now, you notice these are all simplified down, like I mentioned, to metadata, operator, admin. You know, metadata read-only operator. It's giving you very standard language for how to think about those things in the environment. When we do grants in Turbo, we like the idea that there can always be temporary expiration, so you can have the idea of some temporary elevated into that permission and then expire it after a period of time. Now, that model of permissions is actually hierarchical, so you can have a cloud team at the top with permission through the whole environment or in different accounts. Again, a common language flowing through with automation. When we make those changes in Turbot, they're automatically synchronized into AWS. We think this is really, really important. Your users need to see what's happening. That visibility piece is critical. So if we go and look at the users there, we just gave some more permission to Cody. We can see here that basically he's been added to that extra group we just gave him, which is the operator group. right? And then we can actually drill through that to see the groups and see all the policies associated with it and understand what's happening in that environment you know, in an optimized way in an optimized way.
So for Turbo, what that means, once you bring together those sorts of policies, you can start to use that framework across hundreds of services, whether it's EC2, you know, S3, Lambda, and combine those things in powerful ways. You can use Lambda creating an IAM role because you have a guardrail that detects the new role and adds the lockdown policies to it, making it safe for users to do that sort of thing. The sum total of that is that your software-defined infrastructure now has software-defined operations to match it. Nothing else will move at the speed you need of that software-defined infrastructure. If applications are changing things underneath you, you have to have software that responds to that. You know, checking and reviewing later, it's impossible to keep up. We've all tried. Right? Putting people through templates first, it's too hard to stay on top of. So at Turbot, the way we like to think about that is really thinking of your cloud team enabling those application teams. And we really see Turbot as a droid that's enabling that for you and you know, enhancing your team in that capability. So I'm out of time. Thank you so much for your time. I'd love to talk to anyone afterwards. We're at booth 2617 on the other end. If you'd like to be scanned on the way out, we're giving away some R2D2 Lego and a BB-8 Lego you know, at 5 o'clock today and tomorrow. Thanks very much.